Lee Haney and Ronnie Coleman, two of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. And on paper, these two are absolutely, bar none, the greatest bodybuilders of all time. With a combined 16 Mr. Olympias between the two of them, and of course, both of these gentlemen have the most Olympia title wins under their belt, both tied with eight Mr. Olympia titles. Just incredible. And I can't believe that I have never done a comparison between these two great champions ever before, and today we will do so. And right from the get-go, it is worth to mention that there's going to be aspects of Ronnie Coleman that are just far greater than Lee Haney because of the, the time period. This is 1991 for Lee Haney and 1998 for Ronnie Coleman. The last title win for Lee Haney and the very first title win for Ronnie Coleman. And every decade, they, the bodybuilders add something. And it seems lag size was what Ronnie Coleman really brought to the stage, as did Dorian, maybe to a lesser extent. But then Ronnie Coleman really came on with those massive legs. And I, I have to say, judging by size, it's going to be Ronnie Coleman's game. But if you like aesthetics, if you like that rugged, I don't know if you want to call it a manly look. I'm not going to call Ronnie Coleman non-manly, but I mean, Lee Haney looks like a rugged outdoorsman looks like you could chop a tree down things of that nature but anyway guys you're not going to win a bodybuilding contest by looking rugged you gotta put it all together so let's go to the muscularity round front double bicep pose and as far as lee haney is concerned maybe one of his worst poses and that's not to say it's a bad pose i mean if you look at the rest of his shots for his time this one was probably not his best and Ronnie Coleman, this may very well be his best pose. But I have to say, guys, and you can take anybody's uh, testimony on this, Lee Haney was huge. Just monstrous. I believe it was Vince Taylor was talking about how big, how much bigger he was than guys like him and Kevin Lavroni. And just massive, massive structure, bone structure. Of course, when you look at the legs, the muscle size of the arms... That is definitely on Ronnie Coleman's side, and you have to give him the win, right? Well, not necessarily. If you're strictly a fan of aesthetics, look at the vacuum pose here and that size of the structure. Look at the lats of Lee Haney. Just huge. You got to think, guys, he was dwarfing even Dorian Yates as far as the structure is concerned. And I don't recall Ronnie Coleman ever doing that with Dorian Yates. If anything, it was the other way around as far as their structures. Just huge. Underrated was the size of Lee Haney. Of course, like I said, the lag size. If you're going to judge this one fairly, you got to go with Ronnie. But look at that deep conditioning of Lee Haney. That vascularity. And you could even see that from the very first shot that I showed in this comparison. Lee Haney. Awesome. Awesome. Front lat spread. Now, this is a situation where... It's a good pose for both guys. Ronnie Coleman, he's a little uneven here. And you can definitely see that when you compare this with a perfectly symmetrical Lee Haney. Just awesome. Opens up like an umbrella. Muscle separation, very good for Ronnie Coleman. Again, guys, when you see the lags, it's, it's a different sport. It's a different era, different decade. All together, well, it's the same decade, it's the 90s, but you know what I'm saying, guys. The sport changed so much. Lee Haney was a, an 80s guy coming into the early 90s and retired here. This was his last time, and the sport changed so much, and those lags, big time. Upper body, I would have no problem giving this one to Lee Haney. He's much more symmetrical and much more aesthetic with that vacuum. Just perfect, perfect. So there's a definite argument, guys. If you are a big fan of that and you really honestly don't prefer massive quads, massive legs like Ronnie has. But for nowadays, if they were judging this one, I mean, you know which one they're going to vote for. And I'm going to vote this one like I used to with the, you know, 
taking everything into consideration, if Lee Haney's legs were decent sized for his time, then I'm not going to ding him on that. But anyway, guys, side chest development. And this is very impressive. The actual size of Lee Haney, that structure, like I keep saying. Look at the chest on this man. It's much bigger, much larger than Ronnie Coleman's. But when you take a close look, look at the arms on Ronnie Coleman. I mean, twice as big than uh, Lee Haney's. Twice as big, guys. But that chest, stuff of legend, he really brought that 1970s chest into the 1980s and on into the early 1990s. Here's more of a full body picture so you can really gauge how much bigger those lags were for Ronnie Coleman, of course. In the shot like this, Lee Haney, not too bad, not too bad in the lag department. The upper body this time looks very massive for Ronnie Coleman. Would you take a, a close look at the pecs, though? Lee Haney, still a massive, genetically massive set of pecs. Plus, of course, he worked on them very diligently. Anyway, guys, I mean, Ronnie's probably going to get this one. But aesthetically... I kind of prefer Lee Haney, to tell you the truth. Side tricep. And this is pretty much known as Ronnie Coleman's worst pose. This may be in the avant thigh, which we will see in a minute. And I gotta say, Lee Haney, maybe not the best pose for him this year. In 1987, he displayed maybe one of the best side triceps for its time. Ronnie Coleman, he looks pretty good in 98. Other than maybe the, the big split, the Rambo split in his chest, throwing the little bit of gyno that I can see, I can see it. So, aesthetically speaking, that pack, again, Lee Haney's packs, bigger and better than Ronnie Coleman's, period. As far as the tricep is concerned, Ronnie Coleman, he has a highly inserted one, but he is packing heat back then. Both of these guys possess a uh, striated tricep. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's they fall under the... Uh, the pancake category, as Mikey's Iron Rage says. Pancake category, when you, he sees a flat tricep. Anyway, I just think that's hilarious. I mean, which way are you going to go, guys? Ronnie Coleman, he's bigger, maybe better conditioned. Of course, Lee Haney, he's surprisingly conditioned when in this comparison. And his structure is so much better than Ronnie Coleman's. So, let's go to the back development. And because, of course... They just did not show their glutes, nor did they really judge them on the size or even the conditioning. We're just going to look at the backs in the first comparison. And Lee Haney, again, guys, look at the size. Very impressive in the width. Of course, the detail, Ronnie Coleman, a little bit better in the muscle separation, to tell you the truth, a lot better. Especially when you look at the traps, big mountains, mountainous. Now, genetically speaking, the lat insertions... Much more favorable, I think, for Lee Haney. Much lower, inserted. Just looks better overall. But guys, you got to think that muscle separ separation in the traps. Here's a full body picture of both guys. So you can really gauge that size. And Lee Haney was huge, guys. Look at the size of those lats. Those are bat wings. Again, though, that muscle separation. And when you look at the glutes and in the lag department, I mean, it's obvious which way the judges would vote. But there's going to be a whole lot of people saying that they much prefer Lee Haney, and I'm right there with you. Right there with you, buddy. But, I mean, you got to go for the... If you're going to be serious about judging this one, you have to go with those striated glutes, lags, muscle separation in the back as well, guys. Let's have a look at the rear double by. And this is a very close-up picture of Lee Haney. I think it's taken from a magazine. You can see the, the split... The bridge in the magazine, the center of the page. So it's not going to be the, your best shot. But it actually was a very clear picture. I don't think I've ever used this one, food for thought. Look at the size of those lats. Just This is Kai Green-like and a structure like uh, Ronnie Coleman. So, I mean, this back is hard to beat. No, he doesn't have the conditioning of Ronnie Coleman. But his size is so much greater, guys. Just impressive. Very impressive. Here's a full body one, or pretty much a full body one, where you can really gauge. And if you're thinking that I sized them incorrectly, well, maybe I did a slightly. But, I mean, take a look, guys. That back development, just unbelievable. If Ronnie Coleman had 
Lee Haney's back, genetics, he would have been no argument. He would have been better than Dorian Yates, any of them, Phil Heath. I mean, my soul. Now, of course, look at the legs, and I, I do see a little bit of glutes there for Lee Haney. But look at the legs, guys. The dry hamstrings. Looks like beef jerky for Ronnie Coleman. Very impressive. Very impressive. So, as a whole, he probably would steal a victory in both of the back shots. But you, it has to be written somewhere that Lee Haney, his back development, genetically speaking, I mean, he trained, obviously. Just unbeatable. Abs and thigh pose. Now, right Judge this one right down the center, fairly. Put the judges in nowadays. Whatever. They might still vote for Ronnie Coleman because his quad is twice as big as Lee Haney's. But I don't know. I think the aesthetics of Lee Haney is just so much greater. The the V taper, those lats, just incredible. I mean, Lee Haney in this pose, upper body wise, he is mopping the floor with Ronnie King Coleman. He's actually beating, dominating Ronnie King Coleman upper body wise in a lot of the poses. I think it was the legs maybe that would have saved Ronnie Coleman. And of course the muscles when you think about the poses like the front double by. Things of that nature. I mean it's a good matchup though guys. I mean decade difference or not. Lee Haney's still able to pull off a victory in at least a couple of these poses. Most muscular, we're definitely going to be finishing this one off with this pose, even though they didn't use this one as a mandatory shot back in 1991, nor did they in 1998, so it's kind of fair in a way. Look at that vascularity, like I was talking about, and that hard graininess of Lee Haney, condition-wise, from a lot of these front shots, he was better than Ronnie King Coleman, believe it or not, all glutes aside. Look at the size of those arms of Ronnie, much bigger, much better, and the three-dimensional muscle that he has in the delts, very impressive. Of course, if you're not looking at the legs too much in this pose, you got to kind of lean towards Lee Haney, just that hard, aggressive, vascular, dry muscle. But then again, three-dimensional, round, muscle bellies, as Louis Marco would say, bellies for days, whatever, he, I don't know. It's funny, much funnier coming from him. But anyway, guys, I don't want to really say Ronnie's the winner in this one and say, oh, he's better. It's not like that. This matchup was between two of the greatest legends of all time, and I think you guys know how I feel about it. For their time, Lee Haney was every bit as good or maybe even better than Ronnie Coleman. After all... Not too many people challenged him. He really had no weak points. And as small legs might be a weak point in this matchup for his time, definitely he had a good set of legs. So he may have been just as or more dominant, like I said, than Ronnie King Coleman. But in a straight-up matchup, you know the King's got to dominate. But no disrespect meant to either one. Both are winners in my book. I hope you enjoyed this comparison, guys. Hit thumbs up on it if you did, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this if you have not already. Follow me on Instagram as well. Have a great day, guys.